All right, what's up guys? Today we're finally doing the Tenyi Giant Ballpark combo videos. If you haven't seen the video already, it's on the channel or I might make it pop up on the screen. But yeah, I finally got over my bronchitis. I'm only coughing once every few hours now, so I can do this combo video. We will start off with a any Tenyi and Vessel of the Dragon uh, cycle. Uh, the preferable tenue to start with is at Hara, but it really could be anything. Or it doesn't really matter. At Hara or the Asuna. I'm going to show you the variant to... I'm going to I'm gonna show you the combo that you would do if you were going first with these two cards. And then I'll show you the combo to do if you were going second with these two cards. So what we're going to do to start off is we're going to special summon the at Hara. We are going to link that at Hara away. We're going to special summon the Monk of the Tenyi. Then we're going to activate Vessel of the Dragon Souls. We're going to look through our deck to send Mare Mare. And we're going to add the Ashna to our hand because we control a non-effect monster. Uh, then we are going to... This is our graveyard here. We have the Tenyis. Then we're going to special summon the Ashna. We're going to link these two away into our shaman right there we are now going to um i guess you pretend you have another card in your hand to discard we're gonna get back anyway uh discard a random card from our hand in order to target the mare mare and graveyard and special summon it so discard that random card uh make sure it's not something important that's something important uh, discard the random card. Activate the effect of Mare Mare up to three times per turn. We can summon a token. We'll summon them right here. Three tokens. Uh, now we are going to link away the tokens. We are going to link away two of the tokens. Make sure two. We're going to link away these two on the outskirts. Link those two tokens away to special summon IP Masquerina. And now we are going to go in the graveyard. Activate the effect of Ashina, banish that. We're now locked into Worms. We're going to summon a level 4 Tenyu monster. Shathana is the best. Summon Shathana. Uh, we now have Mare Mare. Mare Mare is level 4 because every single time you summon a token, it reduces the level of Mare Mare by 1. So it's now level 4. Shathana is level 4. Take these two and you can choose what you want to do here. You are locked into Worms. So as of right now, you can go into either Berserker or Tornado Dragon. It doesn't matter which one you want to go into, but you can go into either of them. Uh, it really depends on the matchup. So you can go either into Tornado Dragon if you are uh, expecting Altergeist or something like that. Or you can go into the Berserker if you're expecting something more monster heavy. It really depends on you and what you want to do with your life. But I'm going to go with the Berserker. And now, just on this board, off the two cards... We can still activate actually the Adhara in Graveyard since we control a non-effect monster. Banish that and then we're going to add back the Ashner back to our hand. So, banish that right there. So yeah, it's a pretty pretty decent board off of essentially two cards. And we get the Ashner back anyway. Uh, so what do we have here? Uh, we end our turn. We either have the Banish of a monster on our opponent's side of the field when they activate an effect or anywhere. So we can banish our opponent's monster you know, when they activate something, or the Tornado Dragon, either of those. And then also, during our opponent's turn, we can activate IP, Link Shaman and IP Mascarino away, in order to special summon whatever we want, but usually it's going to be either Appaloosa, or the Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax. So you link those two away, and you have the Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax, and the Draco Berserker. Which is pretty pretty decent off of just two cards. And remember the IP Mascarina cannot be... Uh, the monster summoned off of IP Mascarina so it can't be destroyed by card effects. And IP Mascarina is actually really really good in Tenyi's because Shaman locks you into activating only Tenyi effects. But if you summon IP Mascarina you can actually branch that over two turns so it's not really a big deal. And you can just activate your effects later like on your opponent's turn. It's really, really cool. Uh, she kind of splits your plays into two turns. Uh, but that is combo number one. I'm going to show you the same combo, but a what to do when you're going second with those exact same cards. Now we're going to do the combo uh, again, but this that was the going first version of that combo. Now we're going to show the going second version of that combo. We're going to special summon the Ashina. 
Then we are going to link it away into a Monk of the Tenyi right there. We're now going to activate the Vessel. We're going to send to the graveyard our Mare Mare. And since we control a non-effect monster, we can add a Tenyi monster, which is going to be our Adhara. Although it can be any Tenyi monster. Since we are going second, it can be Mashuda, which can bounce to your opponent's monsters. It can be anything you want. It doesn't really matter. We're going to Special Summon the Adhara. We're going to link these two away in order to Special Summon the shaman from the graveyard i mean from the extra deck um now again same same case uh, random card we're going to discard any card in our hand in order to target the mare mare to special summon we're now going to activate the effect of mare mare to summon three tokens uh, now with these tokens you can either make a link rebo because they are level one or you can uh you can, instead of making the Link Haribo, you can actually use two of the tokens to make an IP Mascarina. Right there. And then you can link away the IP Mascarina and the last token in order to special summon from our extra deck the here we go, Berserker. Right there. And remember, this is the going second version of the combo. Now we have another non-effect monster. We can banish Ashina from our graveyard in order to summon a any mon, any Tenyi monster from our deck. Remember, we are locked in the, at this point into Tenyi effects, and we're locked into since we use Ashina using uh, only Worm summons for the rest of the turn. So at this point, I'm going to special summon the Shathana because it'll give us even more battle phase nonsense. We're going to take these two. We're going to synchro summon into Berserker of the Tangy. And that is pretty much it. This is for going second, of course. Uh, so what exactly do we have here? We have Berserker, which is 3,000 attack, and it can't be destroyed by card effects uh, because it was summoned off of IP Mascarina. We also have, when a non-effect monster attacks, we can pop a card. Uh, Berserker, whenever it can, whenever your opponent activates a monster effect, you can banish that monster, and then on top of that, when it destroys a monster effect monster by battle, it gains half, and then you can attack again. So it's pretty pretty decent for going second off of two cards, and then of course we do still have the Adhara Engraved, so you can banish that in order to get Ashina back if we needed to. So we can recover the card that we basically discarded off of Shaman. So this is a pretty decent going second. Uh, strategy just off of two cards you have you, you gain quite a lot of advantage you can break a board pretty easily with it um, and of course this does pop cards this can snipe a multi faker or a gazelle and then of course this is just difficult to get rid of at this point because uh, you can uh, instead of actually sending Shathana you can actually send and I, I usually wouldn't do this because this is one of my least favorite ones you can actually send Maputra instead of the Shathana in order to um, do the Synchro Summon with the Mare Mare because now it'll have targeting protection and it'll have, it can't be destroyed by card effects. Or you can send uh, the green one, but it really doesn't matter. But yeah, that's the, that's the going second uh, version of that exact same strategy. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty good. And all of these strategies you can basically do if you, if you start off with like any two Tenyes and Mare Mare in hand, you can do that exact same, sh you can do all of that, what I just did, by starting off with this stuff, uh, pretty, pretty easily, because, uh, and you won't be locked into stuff, you can just, you can actually just summon two, if you really needed to, you can, like, summon two, two of these, you know, summon this, turn it into a non-effect monster, summon this, tribute, and then you can go straight into a Mech Knight Crusade Avermax with protection right off the bat if you really needed to it's like super instant and uh, now I'm going to show you the same combo but with some some side deck cards so give me a second to un unwind all of it all right now since this is mostly a going second deck and usually you will win game one and game two they'll make you go second if they're a smart opponent so you have things you can side in uh, something I like to side in in this deck is Vanity's Fiend and Artifact Sanctum. Either of these is fine because it'll stop 99% of opponents. Uh, Vanity's Fiend is just, it, it's better overall. It's better overall in, in like in theory because it'll even stop things like dinosaurs and it'll, it's very difficult to get over. 
And the great thing about Vanity Fiend is game one, they'll play against you. They'll realize you're playing a bunch of non-effect monsters, so they'll side out stuff like Impermanence. And then game two, you'll drop Vanity Fiend, and they're just like, oh, uh, uh, they don't know what to do because they didn't expect any of that to happen. But now we're going to do the same combo, but I'm going to drop a Vanity Fiend. So this is basically for game two. So you win game one because you OTK them. You have like a going second strategy in your deck. And then you go to game two, you side in Vanity Fiend, Artifact Sanctum, stuff like that. And now I'm going to show you how to play uh, with this in hand and then basically the same combo. So we're going to special summon Edhara. We're going to link the Edhara away in order to summon the uh, Monk of the Tenyi. Then we're going to activate the Vessel of the Dragon Cycle in order to send the Mare Mare to Graveyard. And then we're going to add the Ashina to hand. And now we are going to special summon Ashina. We're going to link the Ashina and the Monk away in order to special summon the shaman we are going to discard our random card which we are going to get back in advantage anyway to special summon mare mare from the graveyard activate mare mare to summon three tokens right there uh, we're going to take two of the tokens the ones where the lines are uh, in order to special summon ip mascarina and now it's up to us where we want to take this but just to be safe and i like to be safe you we are going to banish the Tenny Adhar in order to special summon from our deck the Shathana. Special summon sh the Shathana from our deck. And now we can do whatever we want. We can either special summon the Tornado Dragon or, like I said before, you can summon Tornado Dragon or you can summon our other homie which is the draco the berserker it really depends on game one what happened if you're playing against ultra guys you do one thing if you're playing against salmangrates you do a completely other thing but for this particular combo i'm going to summon tornado dragon because last time i summoned the berserker and now our last card in hand is the vanity fiend but before we do that we are going to whoops i banished around one before i should have banished the ashina uh basically now we're going to banish the adhara in order to get back the Ashina to hand. And Ashina locks us into only special summoning worms, but we can normal summon other cards, it's no big deal. But before we do that, we are going to link away the Shaman and the IP Mascarina in order to special summon our Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax right there. So we're gonna link those away. And remember, because it was summoned off of IP, it does carry over the cannot be destroyed by card effects uh claws uh because of course the of course shaman does prevent us from activating non tenny effects but we're not activating the effect we're, it's just kind of something that carries over so it's still not going to be it's, it can't be targeted can't be destroyed it can be uh can't be targeted can't be destroyed by card effects it's the only card on your side of the field that can be attacked and on top of that uh it gains attack when it battles which is super awesome and like I said, this only locks us into special summoning uh, worms. But we can normal summon anything we want. We haven't normal summoned yet. So we're going to tribute the token. And we're going to normal summon the Vanity Fiend. And that's going to be our end board uh, after we side. That's basically game. Nobody's going nobody's gonna to stop you with that. That is absolutely disgusting. Uh, it's an awesome board going set. Uh, it's an awesome board going first when your opponent thinks you're playing. Your opponent basically thinks you're playing uh a pure going second deck you just drop this on them and they just they, they can't do anything and the other variant is basically if you have the artifact sanctum so we'll take the token we'll bring it back uh, it would be the exact same combo which you set an artifact sanctum and you wouldn't use the ip during your turn you would use it during your opponent's turn or you wouldn't even be using the ip in this case you would just have linked it away but you would just in this case uh bring it back to the ip and the shaman and then you'd basically set the artifact sanctum and you'd end your turn your opponent would probably summon like a monster and let's say let's say they're playing like luna lights they'd summon like two level fours as soon as they drop two level fours the artifact sanctum and then drop the scythe and now they can't special summon and then as soon as they you know say they're going into battle phase you link those two away you make the crusader avermax and then this is the only monster that they can attack. And what's important is that you kept the token on board. So all of your all of your Tenyi cards in theory are alive. So next turn, even though you can't special summon this because you control non-effect monsters, 
I mean, you, even though you control effect monsters, you control a non-effect monster, so you can banish this out of hand and summon any ten you want. You can summon a shooter, you can summon anything you want, disrupt their board with Tornado Dragon, stuff like that. But yeah, this is basically a very, very disgusting post-siding uh, board. You can Sank them, or you can Vanity Fiend. They're both very good side, side deck cards uh, for this particular deck. But uh, that is that combo. Next, we are going to... We're going to do some ballpark stuff. Alrighty, now we are doing some ballpark stuff. How do you use ballpark? What do you do? Uh, some some basic stuff. This is, uh, like I said, I'm just going to show you. Imagine your opponent has a board. Uh, let's do this. This is We have two cards here. The last card you ever want to activate in your hand is always Giant Ballpark. Because that's like the big surprise of the deck. The Tenyi stuff is, you know, everybody knows Tenyi. Well, not everybody knows, but Tenyi's are... At least some of them are pretty pretty well known, like Vashuda and Atar and stuff like that. But no one is ever expecting the giant ballpark, so always activate this last. But all we need for this combo is just two cards. We're going to special summon the Vashuda. And then this is imagining that they stopped basically everything else we did except for the Vashuda and the giant ballpark. Uh, we're going to activate the giant ballpark right there. Now we're going to go into battle phase. We're going to attack anything that is lower than Vashuda. Attack. Uh, cancel the battle damage with giant ballpark so neither player takes battle damage all right we're going to cancel the battle damage with giant ballpark and we can send an insect from our deck to the graveyard and if that insect is a normal monster we can actually special summon up to three from our hand deck or graveyard so none of them were bricks it's insane so now we are going to special summon the shiny black sea squatter from our deck i mean from our graveyard and then up two others from our deck so we basically summon three of them uh we just went plus three and remember giant ballpark uh this effect is an effect that activates during damage calculation so you can't get ashed you can't get ogre you can't get like there's no like there's no hand trap that can really interact with this in any way as a matter of fact if they waited long enough for you to activate this effect during the damage calculation they can't even twin twister it uh there's really not much I, I don't know if there is, I, I can't think off the top of my head of a card that can stop it once this card is already face up on the field and the effect is getting activated. Because your opponent can, because uh, this isn't an, an effect that's activating, it's not an activation, and you can't negate effects during damage calculation, you can only negate activations. So there is really not that much that your opponent can do about this once the effect is being activated already. Uh, but basically, yeah, we're going to summon those guys, the, the homies out here, and then we are going to proceed to continue attacking. And then we go to main phase two. This is where we basically end it all. We destroy them. Uh, so we're going to take the... Uh, it doesn't really matter about the order, but we're going to... We're going to... We can take the Vishuda and the Black Sea Squatter, link those two away into... Hold on, where did I put this stuff? Link those two into an IP, because IP needs to be summoned off of... Uh, it has to be summoned off of non-link monsters, so we're going to link those two away. At this point, if we needed to, we can banish the Vashuda and then bounce a card, if we wanted to. And then we can take the Black Sea Squatter. We have a ton of different plays that we can make. Like, this is this is worst case scenario if we didn't OTK them. This is what you do afterwards. You can either make an Abyss Dweller off of those two. You can make, you can make Tornado Dragon, or uh, the play that I go for most often is like I said I'll bounce I'll banish this to bounce with Vashuda and then I'm gonna get rid of my non-effect monsters and I'm going to activate link those two away to summon the Insector Pika Flana and then you can target three insects in the graveyard shuffle them into your deck and then draw a card so I'm gonna shuffle and then draw a random card I'm not going to show you what it is, because it's going to be, I mean, you might as well just look. Yeah, they're Mystic Mine. <laughs> it's not bad at all. Uh, that's just in case everything goes wrong, you now have a Mystic Mine in your hand. But yeah, basically shuffle and then draw a free card. And then you can end your turn here during your opponent's turn. They go, oh yeah, they'll summon monsters, they'll, go, they'll enter battle phase. And then as soon as they enter battle phase, or they attempt to enter battle phase, you can go into the Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax, drop it. Or you can do the... Uh, the you can make, you could do the Appaloosa play if you wanted to. But most of the time you go into the Mech Knight Crusader Avermax. <coughs> uh, and this is, like I said, this is worst case scenario. This is if you don't, if you don't already OTK them, which most of the time you will because you're playing Lava Golem, you're playing Hand Traps. You're going to, you're going to 
they're going to do a suboptimal board. You're going to tribute whatever they have. You're going to bounce Lava Golem with Vishuda to your own hand, and you're going to tribute their stuff again. It's, it's, it's really good. And like I said, every single time Giant Ball Park resolves, it's basically a plus three. You get three free monsters, and then you can do whatever you want with them. Link plays, and they feed into the uh, Tenyi cards because they're all non-effects. All of your Tenyis are always live at all times. It's really good. So if they manage to get rid of this, they still have to contend with this. Uh, it's, it, it's a tough deck. Uh, but that, I think that's it. That's, that's all I can really show you. I, I don't know if there's much else in terms of combos. I'm not really going to do test hands because it's, it's, it's physically impossible. Because there's no way for me to do test hands with a going second deck. Just because I don't know what the enemy board is. And the enemy board is really the biggest... It's really the biggest deal when it comes to doing test hands. I don't, I don't, like going second, you can't. I can't imagine what I'm playing against. But believe me, with all of the Lava Golems and Vashudas and the Shathanas and the Ash Blossom and all this other stuff, you can you can definitely break boards. Lava Golem, everything like that. The Giant Ballpark that summons three monsters in, in battle phase. Avermax. You can definitely break boards most of the time. But that's basically it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's been very fun playing this deck. And like I said, if you haven't seen the deck profile, it is on the channel. Again, thank you for watching.